November 8th, 2010, 10.20 p.m. Three armed men storm into a suburban Markham home owned by Han Pan and his wife, Bick. Han is woken up from his sleep and violently pulled out of bed. Jennifer, his 24-year-old daughter, is tied to the stair railing upstairs with a shoelace. Han is dragged to the basement while the gunmen demand cash. He tells them that the family doesn't have much money in the house. Downstairs, Han's wife Bick is already being held at gunpoint. Han is struck with the handgun before he is covered in a blanket. At 10.32 p.m., York Regional Police receive a 911 call from Jennifer Pan. 911, do you Help me, please, I need help. Where are you, ma'am? 2 gunshots and has a bullet lodged in his orbital bone. His wife, Jennifer's mother, has been murdered. Minutes later, police arrive and the investigation begins. For three days, York homicide investigators went to work trying to understand why the Pan house would become the target of a lethal home invasion. During this time, Han Pan rested in hospital in an induced coma. When he awoke, his story had some striking differences to the one his daughter had told police. Han told police how he was pulled out of bed, but he didn't see Jennifer tied to the railing. When Han reached the kitchen, he saw Jennifer, unbound, speaking with one of the armed intruders as if he were a friend. Han was forced to the basement, where he was shot twice and lost consciousness. The intruders presumed he was dead. Homicide investigators re-interviewed Jennifer and discovered holes in her story. They uncovered an exhaustive history of lying to her parents about report cards, working in a pharmacy, and even attending university. They also learned more about a secret relationship with boyfriend Daniel Wong, the extent of which Jennifer had hidden for years. Jennifer's parents had forbidden her from seeing Daniel after discovering she was living with him in the spring of 2010 rather than working downtown Toronto, as she had told them. Eventually, officers obtained more than 100 production orders from wireless phone companies and poured over 1 million text messages and phone calls. They exposed a conspiracy to commit murder between Jennifer and Daniel that dated back to the summer. Their dogged investigation would eventually uncover the true events of the night of November 8, 2010. Through a secret murder phone, Daniel had put Jennifer in contact with a group of contract killers that would be paid to murder her parents and make it appear like a random home invasion. The three armed men did not storm the Markham home. They were let in by Jennifer, who unlocked the front door after saying goodnight to her mother. She retreated to her room, where she exchanged cryptic texts with the hired killers who waited nearby. She turned her bedroom light off and on again to signal that it was time. And then she prepared for the performance of her life. The strong teamwork of several York Regional Police units and the competence of officers who used innovative, investigative and interviewing techniques would eventually lead to four first-degree murder convictions and a fifth conviction for conspiracy to commit murder. Their excellence in policing assured York Region residents that Bick Pan's death was not the result of a random home invasion, but rather a carefully constructed murder plot. <laughs>